This tutorial will introduce a methodology for photographic process identification. Each process has a set of unique characteristics called key identifying features, which includes the support material, image color, image deterioration, surface sheen, image structure, and layer structure. Many processes may have similar characteristics, but when you put the combination of features together, like a puzzle, you can arrive at the correct conclusion. This methodology will give you a step-by-step -step approach to looking for these features. We begin by dividing the key identifying features into three groups, object view, surface view, and magnification view. Graphics Atlas has visual identification guides in the search function that visually define the common key identifying features for photographs. Start with the object view, which includes features that can easily be observed with even illumination and no magnification. First, identify the primary support of the material. Any material other than paper automatically narrows down the possibilities. Then, look at the image color. Photographic images are typically either monochromatic or full color. Monochromatic images may be black, purple red, brown, or yellow, and there is a range within each image color. There are also images that are other colors like blue and even red or green. When determining image color, use a daylight balance light source. Other lights skew your perception of image color. Also, the color of the highlights alters your perception of the overall color of the image. Use an index card with a hole punched in it to isolate areas of the image. Finally, look at the color of the shadows and the dark midtones only because image fading often occurs in the highlights first. Some forms of deterioration used for identification are also visible with the object view. Some prints are prone to color shifting, highlight yellowing, image ghosting, and or image fading. There are other observations that may help narrow down a date range for photographs, such as context clues within the image, the format, and information written or printed on the object. Next, move on to the surface view. Surface characteristics are observed using directional lighting and no magnification. A single light from above is used to observe surface sheen. Hold a flashlight a few inches above the print and then position your body so that you are looking straight down at the print. This will give that ball of light effect. Or, manipulate the print under a light source, allowing the light to bounce off the surface. A rough surface produces a matte sheen. A surface with some texture produces a semi-matte sheen, and a smooth surface gives a glossy sheen. A plastic or metal surface often has a high gloss sheen. Some prints will exhibit differential gloss, in which the shadows are glossier than the highlights. A pink and green colored iridescence can also occur. Finally, some prints have a bluish or whitish sheen in the shadows called silver mirroring, or a bronze colored sheen called bronzing. The final step is the magnification view, which includes observations of image structure and layer structure. Image structure can be observed with a 10x loop. Hold the cup of the loop to your eye, lean over the print, stopping when the print is in focus. Then, take a flashlight in your other hand, holding it at a 45 degree angle, illuminating the area you are examining. Always look in the mid-tone areas. Most true photographs are continuous in tone, Pigment-based photographs are continuous in tone and have pigment particles evenly dispersed throughout. Photomechanical and digital prints have a patterned image. 30x to 50x magnification allows you to see the image structure more clearly. This can be achieved using a pocket microscope or a stereo microscope. If using a pocket microscope, place a piece of polyester sheeting on the surface of the print first to avoid abrasions. Some processes require higher magnification of 50x for identification. At this level of magnification, the image grain of color prints is visible. The grain correlates to the way in which the image was formed. This level of magnification can be achieved with some pocket microscopes or with a stereo microscope. Determining the layer structure of prints with a paper support requires 30x to 50x magnification and raking light. Using a pocket microscope or a stereo microscope, angle your light source so that it is raking across the surface of the print at a 90 degree angle. First, determine whether or not the paper fibers are visible. If they are obscured, the print likely has three or more layers. 
if the paper fibers are visible, determine where the image is in relationship to the paper fibers. In a one-layer photograph, the image is in the paper, and it looks as if the fibers are stained with the image material. One-layer photomechanical and digital prints, the image rests on top of the paper fibers. Alternately, the paper fibers may be visible, but the image is above the paper fibers. This indicates the print has a binder or coating. This is a feature of photographic prints with two layers, or a three-layer print with a very thin varietal layer. For digital or photomechanical prints, the paper is likely coated. The distinction between the image being in the paper or above the paper can be difficult and takes practice. You can also look at the corners or edges of the print where damage is likely to have occurred, which may reveal how many layers the print has. Using this methodology for identification, you will be able to recognize the key identifying features of each process. Pairing this information with a reference resource like Graphics Atlas will help you to successfully identify the objects in your collection.